Oh, that looks like a pretty good thumbnail. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing this relatively intriguing new research on the idea of quantum teleportation of energy. Or to phrase this in much simpler terms, being able to create energy in a completely different location out of what seems to be nothing. And even though in modern physics the idea of creation of energy out of nothing usually is met with a lot of skepticism and normally a lot of laughter, things change just a little bit once you start introducing ideas from the quantum physics, and specifically the concept of quantum vacuum state. Something that various experiments have been able to prove for a very long time now, producing various energy fluctuations in what seems to be complete vacuum where there should be nothing there. The principle sometimes referred to as the quantum fluctuations. And so in this video we're going to discuss some of these new discoveries, some of these new propositions, and the two experiments, very recent experiments, that kind of made this possible. Made what possible? They sort of showed that it might be possible to transfer energy remotely through the process of quantum teleportation, and thus, in theory, produce energy out of nothing in one location, but with a small caveat. This energy has to be produced elsewhere. And so let's briefly discuss the theory behind this, because at first when I read this, I was a bit skeptical, but as I kept discovering more and more, I realized that the scientists are actually onto something here after all. With this most recent experiment, conducted in January of 2023, once again confirming that it seemed to be sort of possible. But here the theory is super important, because conceptual misunderstanding of this topic is very very common. First of all, despite the name, this is not Star Trek-like teleportation. It doesn't involve any wormholes, it doesn't involve any portals, it does not involve traveling faster than the speed of light, and does not violate any physics. And as a matter of fact, the word teleportation is maybe even not the best word to use here. But it does involve quantum ideas, such as entanglement, which then starts producing various effects across various distances. But I think the easiest way to understand what's happening here is to actually kind of go through the same questions the original scientist was going through when he sort of proposed this. It was this Japanese scientist that you see right here, Masahiro Hota, seen here pictured with Stephen Hawking. And his reasoning was really simple. Well, the scientists have been confirming these quantum fluctuations. Or basically, fluctuations in the quantum field itself that produces tiny minute variations of energy, with particles appearing and disappearing, and even the vacuum itself producing a kind of a jitter. At the same time, other experiments have definitively showed that you can actually transfer information from one location to another if two particles are entangled. Or basically taking one particle entangled to another particle, or taking one photon entangled to another photon, can easily allow the scientists to transfer information by affecting one of these particles and seeing the changes on the other side almost instantly. And so using this logic and understanding that these energy fields exist everywhere in the universe, Dr. Hota made a really simple assumption. Shouldn't it be possible to transfer energy remotely using very similar principles? Which intriguingly also led him to various ideas about negative energy. Something that some scientists believe might be happening around black holes. As black holes shrink and as they evaporate using Hawking radiation, this can also be actually seen as a radiation emitted from their interiors as they swallow negative energy. Which by the way relates to another video about this topic that you can find in the description below. But besides black holes and besides negative energy, his ideas started to connect several major topics, entanglement, negative energy, and teleportation of energy across distances. Although ironically, as it usually starts in many cases, he was initially trying to sort of disprove this. But as he kept digging more and more, he kept discovering things that seemed to support his original hypothesis. It may be possible to create some kind of a negative energy inside quantum vacuum, making it give up energy that did not exist there before. It might be possible to produce energy out of completely empty vacuum. But with a very important side note, this energy has to be coming from somewhere, somewhere else in the universe. It just doesn't have to be in the exactly same location in the same vicinity. And so to some extent he laid foundations, theoretical foundations, for the main principle of quantum energy teleportation. But not like zapping electricity across the entire universe or trying to create massive amounts of energy elsewhere by using nothing, we're actually talking about something on much much smaller scale. One good example here would be atoms changing the energy level inside the atom from the ground state to the slightly more excited state. And in this case, two atoms would have to be entangled. 
And even though most of this was kind of theoretical, and even debatable for over a decade, in 2022 there was a major breakthrough with at least one experiment you can find in the description below. In this case using principles of magnetic resonance, the same principles that allow us to use MRI machines. And so here by using magnetic fields, it becomes possible to manipulate various quantum states inside various atoms. And for this first experiment, the scientists relied on carbon atoms that were previously entangled inside a tiny microchip. And so here, just like in previous experiments, by changing any information inside one atom, the information inside the other atom would change as well. But the scientists decided to focus on changing the energy of one atom. And they did so by using very specific radio waves, which basically changes the ground state around the atom itself. But when they did this in one atom, this also affected the entangled atom located slightly farther away. Although because these atoms were entangled, and because the information transfer had to happen as well, none of this violated any laws and nothing here traveled faster than light. And intriguingly, just like the hypothesis predicted, the entangled atom changed its energy in the opposite direction. And so it wasn't just the information transfer, it was also energy transfer. But because this was true entanglement, nothing here violated any physics. The information and energy transfer still happened at the speed of light, but it happened much much faster than it would have happened if this involved any actual physical transfer. Even though normally this would take approximately a full second for the energy of one molecule to transfer to the other molecule, during the experiment this only took 37 milliseconds, or about 20 times faster. So kind of showing that this was teleportation after all, just teleportation following the laws of physics. And having conducted this several times, the scientists confirmed that there was a correlation between the increase of energy on one side and the decrease of energy on the other side as if one side was being charged and the other side was being discharged. And now, almost a year later, we have another proof, but this time using a quantum computer. In other words, the scientists were also able to create this by using a publicly available data from the IBM quantum computer and by creating an algorithm that would then transfer the energy from one location to another inside the quantum computer as well. And so essentially, by combining the entangled particles with the transfer of classical information, once again, the scientists observed that on one side there was an energy increase, on the other side there was an energy decrease. So kind of like negative energy. And it's really this observation of negative energy that's one of the more significant discoveries coming out of these studies. And because the original hypothesis also connects this to black holes, this could eventually lead to some major discoveries, including maybe some clarifications of quantum gravity theories. Or basically the theory of everything. And one of the reasons this is now physically possible is really because of advances like this. This is the IBM Q System 1, one of the earlier quantum computers. And not so long ago, I guess a few years ago, IBM made all of this easily accessible through a relatively easy to use web application that then allows you to remotely program and control certain operations on a quantum computer, basically allowing the scientists to conduct these experiments without ever leaving their house. Although in this case, the teleportation itself only happened inside a tiny computer chip. So in order to confirm all of this, this has to be now done over much, much larger distances. For example, maybe using the network in the Stony Brook University and Brookhaven National Laboratory that covers approximately 140 kilometers, which would make this a very important next step in proving all of these ideas. But despite these experiments being really intriguing and showing us something that we didn't really know before, Dr. Hoda himself is not particularly impressed, mostly because it does involve pre-entangled particles and a system that's already pre-connected with the entanglement itself specifically being created for various types of manipulation. But his goal is to try to see if we can actually harvest the zero-point energy. Can we somehow actually extract energy from the vacuum itself by injecting the energy from elsewhere and by somehow entangling all of this in the process? Something that currently nobody knows how to do. But just the fact that these experiments show that we can actually do this, at least on a much smaller scale, all this could one day lead to some really important discoveries when it comes to things like the quantum internet. And so not just transferring information like it's done today in quantum computers, but also transferring tiny bits of energy. But there's still a really big question where all of this leads in the future. It's quite possible that all of this might have extremely limited application, and it's also quite possible that the quantum internet might never become a reality. Nevertheless, these experiments could definitely provide answers about the universe itself. And once again, many of these answers seem to actually guide us toward black holes. It does look like these unusual objects 
seem to hide quite a lot of answers to everything. But at least for now, two really important experiments showing us that things in the quantum world are definitely quite strange, and showing us that the negative energy might be possible after all. But we'll talk more about this once more experiments and more investigations are done, and once the scientists actually come up with something even more exciting. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.